Welcome to our training on using managed Ethernet and fiber switches. Today we will be discussing using Ethernet and fiber managed switches. Remote monitoring with managed switches. Fiber gateways and data acquisition with managed switches and SCADA software. We will go over the difference between managed and unmanaged switches, uh, the different types of fiber cables. We're going to be going over Ethernet network topology, VLAN, quality of service, redundancy, mirroring, and more. We provide industrial control products and data acquisition system solutions that are low DC voltage and operate in extreme temperatures from negative 13 Fahrenheit to 167 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 25 to 75 Celsius. ICP-DAS was established in 1993 and ICP-DAS USA was established in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. I'm Maria Santella, our sales manager, and I've been with ICP DAS USA for 12 years. I've previously held positions as application engineer, technical sales engineer, and web developer. Robert Morau, our senior technical application engineer, with extensive experience testing, troubleshooting, solving complex problems, and implementing applications, will be showing a demonstration later of SCADA software with managed Ethernet switches later in the training. We have a knowledgeable team. We provide product specification and free technical support. Our product selection is reliable, comes with a one-year warranty. We also provide free easy data logger software for Windows computer-based data logging, control, and monitoring. We ship out of Houston, Texas and manufacture our products in Taiwan. We can ship within about a week and we focus on providing the best customer experience. If you have any questions, please enter them in the chat box and we'll be addressing them at the end of the training. A LAN or local area network usually consists of ethernet devices like computers in the same physical location or building. They can be very large or very small and they provide access to file servers, databases and printers. Standard ethernet cabling is used to connect the end devices to the router or switch. If you don't have a router or switch and you want to network computers together, you can use a crossover Ethernet cable to network them. Ethernet is the most widely used network topology. You can connect and link devices together with Ethernet switches in a ring, mesh, or fully connected for redundant paths. The most common network topologies are bus, star, and ring. In star topology, devices or workstations are wired directly to one switch that maintains network connections. Unmanaged switches enable network communication between connected devices and are usually plug and play. You power them up, you plug in your ethernet cables, and you connect them to your network devices. They provide basic connectivity by automatically forwarding network traffic to connected devices like a repeater. Managed switches have software running inside, allowing for configuration and monitoring of each port. They support SNMP, which provides statistics including throughput, network errors, and port status. They also support VLANs, virtual local area network connections that connect multiple devices from different LANs into one network. QoS, quality of service, measures the overall network performance like bandwidth, delay, loss, and jitter. It controls traffic ensuring performance and resources are available for critical applications on the network. Our MSM6226G supports voice VLAN, which ensures priority of the transmission of voice traffic and voice quality over the network. Port mirroring is usually used for monitoring and intrusion protection, 
It allows for monitoring network performance by sending a copy of network packets on one switch port to a network monitoring connection on another switch port. Managed switches offer firewall capabilities that provide security and protect against unauthorized access. Spanning tree protocol helps prevent loops in local area networks with redundant paths. It allows the existence of only one active path between two endpoints for them to function properly. Managed switches provide greater control over network traffic, allowing for optimized performance, improved security, and efficient resource utilization. They're commonly used in enterprise networks, data centers, and industrial environments where network management, scalability, and security are critical. While unmanaged switches are straightforward and cost-effective, managed switches provide flexibility and advanced capabilities for complex network deployments. Unmanaged switches are simple networking devices that provide basic connectivity without the need for configuration. They're commonly used in small scale networks or applications uh, like control panels, and they serve as the central hub for network connectivity. Our unmanaged ethernet switches like NS205, they have five ethernet ports. They're easy to set up. They mount on a DIN rail, have extended operating temperatures, uh, that operating temperature can be extended with conformal coding. Unmanaged switches in comparison to managed switches are usually more affordable and they, um, these uh, switches, they're designed to withstand harsh industrial environments. They ensure reliable data transmission with high quality components and industrial grade specifications. So they provide stable and uninterrupted network connectivity. Our unmanaged power over ethernet switches like NS208 PSC provide power and data over the same ethernet cable, which is convenient for applications installed often in buildings. These Power over Ethernet switches often power our PET 7000 series power over Ethernet Modbus TCP based data acquisition modules, IP cameras, wireless access points, and voice over IP phones. They're widely used in railway, security, and pipeline applications. Managed switches enable efficient network management. They allow for optimized performance, enhanced security, and efficient resource utilization. MSM6226G is powered with a power cable and it can be configured and managed over RS-232 via Telnet or over Ethernet through a web page. To do that, you use the default IP address in a web browser. MSM6226G allows for one administrator to log in at a time. So if I'm logged in, for example, Robert couldn't go on his computer and also try to log in as administrator to make changes. Um, you can have up to three users that can log in at a time just for monitoring the system. MSM6226G, it supports both IP version four and IP version six. And you can change the IP settings, the system name, and the physical location description. There are LED lights that indicate activity, full duplex, and speed. There's a reset button you can use to reset the management system if you want to go back to the default settings. You could see here all the Ethernet ports that you would use to connect your Ethernet cables. It also has a five reports. Through the web interface, you can configure the time or sync with the network time protocol server, create users with different privilege levels, see the CPU load, see the system log, and configure SNMP. The engine ID for SNMP is a unique identifier used with the hashing function for authentication and encryption. The port number corresponds to the physical port on the managed switch. You can configure port speed flow. 
port speed, flow, maximum frame size, excessive collision mode, and power control. The link status indicator lights light up green if the link is up and it's red if it's down. Auto speed selects the highest compatible speed and disabled would disable the port operation. Power control shows the percentage of power consumption per port. You can list out descriptions for the devices connected to each port. Port statistics display information about the data going through the network. And you can also configure virtual LANs. When you set up port mirroring, you set up the port you want to mirror, and it will send a copy of the network packet seen on that port to a network monitoring connection on another switch. It's used for monitoring and intrusion detection. It helps monitor network performance, traffic patterns, and quality of service. Our MSM6226 managed Ethernet switches are being used in railway monitoring applications with our WP8821CE7 programmable automation controller with eight IO slots and Windows CE7 operating system. It runs multiple programs at a time, including a data logging application, a control application, and a monitoring application that's available for viewing over a web page. It's the control program is controlling voltage and current uh, through the IO module that goes out to the machine motor and it's passing information to the SCADA system. The managed switch ensures network priority is given to the WIMPAC controller and provides network security from unauthorized access. Fiber cables are made with long, thin, cylindrical strands of glass that transmit data through the passage of infrared light. You can think of it like a flashlight shining down a hallway um, with reflective mirrors set up at specific angles, which would allow the light to reflect multiple times to traverse down the length of the hallway. A single optic fiber has a core, which is at the center of the fiber where the light travels through. There's cladding material surrounding the core that reflects the light back into the core, a buffer of protective plastic coating on the optical fiber, and a jacket that protects the cable from damage and moisture. Single mode fibers have small cores and they support a longer communication distance. Our single mode NS205PFCS-60, for example, communicates up to 60 kilometers. Single mode fiber is designed to transmit light signals over longer distances with high bandwidth capacity. It has a smaller core size, typically 9 microns, and allows for a single mode of light to propagate through the core. This results in less signal attenuation and higher transmission speeds, which is suitable for long distance applications like telecommunications backbones and data centers. Multimode fibers have a larger core and communicate up to a few hundred meters. Our multimode NS206AFT-T communicates up to two kilometers. Multimode fiber having a larger core size, typically 50 or 62.5 microns, supports the propagation of multiple modes of light simultaneously, which allow for higher dispersion and attenuation, limiting its effective transmission distance. Multimode fiber is commonly used for shorter distance applications within buildings, campus networks, or LAN environments. Selecting between single mode and multi-mode fiber depends on specific network requirements. Single mode fiber offers greater bandwidth and longer reach, making it ideal for applications that demand high data rates and long distance transmissions. Multi-mode fiber is more cost effective and suitable for shorter distances. Budget, communication distance, required bandwidth, and transmission distance are important to consider when selecting fiber cables for your application. We offer a wide range of single mode and multi-mode fiber unmanaged switches. ST connectors have a straight tip. SC connectors, are, those are subscriber connectors with a push-pull mechanism for 
quick insertion and removal, and they're usually used in tight spaces. Some of our switches have um, power over Ethernet ports to power your devices. The MSM6226G managed Ethernet switch I showed you earlier that has fiber ports on board. Industrial fiber switches operate in a wide variety of operating temperatures. They have high electromagnetic interference resistance and protection against shock, vibration, and moisture. Industrial fiber switches are being used in manufacturing plants, oil and glass facilities, transportation systems, and power utilities. They provide a cost-effective, reliable solution for extending network connectivity, and they enhance data transmission in industrial automation and control systems. Our FSM 510G-2F has eight 10, 100, 1000 base T Ethernet ports and two SFP fiber module slots. We offer multi mode and single mode SFP module network adapters. SFP 1G13M SX2 is a multi mode SFP module network adapter. Uh, these switches they provide port security, bandwidth control, quality of service and DHCP option 82, which prevents DHCP client requests from untrusted sources, which improves security. You can remotely monitor network activity with managed switches through the web interface. You can also remotely monitor and control power over ethernet devices with our INS 306, six port IOT ethernet switch with four power over ethernet ports. It's configurable over a web page and you can set it up to power devices based on a schedule as it supports NTP clock synchronization. You can also remotely power devices like IP cameras or our PET 7000 data acquisition modules on or off through a web page. We offer a wide range of analog and digital power over ethernet IO modules. We also provide fiber gateways that extend communication distances of CAN bus, EtherCAT, Ethernet, HART, Profibus, DP, and serial devices. Through using um, these gateways, you can connect fiber cabling, which can extend distances. For example, um, the I2533CS, you can see they support communication distances up to 30 kilometers. And uh, that's how you can use those together kind of to make a um, CAN tunnel over fiber. Aviva SCADA software allows you to visually see the status of equipment on screens. Bar graphs indicate temperature levels, like the level in a storage tank. It can also show temperature and other data in numeric text on a screen. Customized reports can be configured to be emailed out at scheduled times. An alarm window can show at the bottom when the desired levels are out of range. Animated graphics display a real, realistic visualization of the system status. The software is publishable to a web server for remote access through a web page. Uh, local HMIs allow for interaction with IO equipment. Uh, licenses come in development, runtime, and development and runtime in one. You can get a soft key license by email that you would enter in your system, or you can get a USB hard key license that you can move from machine to machine or just leave it in one machine. Um, now I'm gonna pass it over to Robert Morrell for a demonstration of data acquisition with SCADA software and manage switches. Okay, well, let's see, Maria, please pass the screen sharing to me. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay, thank you, Maria. Let's see. Okay, are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Okay, this is our Aviva Edge software. It's our full-blown SCADA package. Uh, using the switches that Maria showed you uh, helps to get the data to the SCADA system for uh, data acquisition and control features. Uh, the SCADA software itself is a nice tool for control and monitoring of uh, facilities and automation applications. With Ethernet switches and managed switches specifically, you can control the data flow and to enhance security within your system. Say, for instance, the uh, WebThin clients that Maria mentioned earlier, you can restrict who has access to see it even further than the security within the SCADA software. So for instance, if certain departments or certain areas were able to, were within the network and were granted control, they can access the screens or uh, the data that you <clears throat> want them to see. But other outside people, you can restrict uh, access to the system so that uh, your system will be more um, secure and you know outside influences won't uh, affect it. Also for uh, large building applications or building automation applications or uh, large entities, uh, managed switches also help to control the quality of service. So for instance, for security cameras that tend to use a lot of bandwidth or other large facilities that have a lot of bandwidth going on, you can uh, separate the network and control data flow using the uh, management console within the, uh, for instance, FSM uh, switch or MSM uh, 6226 switch to uh, control data flow and enhance the security as well. Uh, let's see, with the SCADA software though, uh, the main thing is to be able to get the data from the data sources, meaning sensors, PLCs, HMIs, and to your devices uh, without interference. And the best uh, way to do that is using a managed switch, which can cont control and monitor data flow. Say, for instance, if a device goes offline, you could use the management console to detect where uh, the, the breakage or a loss of communication happened. Say, for instance, a power outage occurred. Uh, there's some relays built into some of the MSM switches that can be used to trigger alarms or send notifications as well. Uh, through the SCADA software itself, you can view alarms and know the system is down. But with the management con console of the managed switches, you can more thoroughly detect uh, the problems. And sometimes you could even alleviate them by adjusting maybe quality of service if your data flow is uh, below optimal and or increase the uh, bandwidth for certain devices if necessary to allow for faster communication. For remote monitoring systems, uh, they're also very beneficial because they can be used to uh, control what data has access to, uh, say, cellular modems or remote uh, systems and thus uh, alleviating the uh, bandwidth requirements for the switch itself, for the router itself within the facility. You can also use it to separate a SCADA systems hardware from the standard network and essentially create a subnetwork as well. Uh, many management features uh, within the FSM, let me go back to that screenshot. Let's see. Uh, Within the FSM switch, it has uh, many different features. Let me just show you a uh, VLAN, which is virtual LAN, quality of service, port trunking, as Maria mentioned earlier, uh, SN, SMTP, <laughs> uh, SNMP, and the Telnet feature is wonderful for uh, using or for configuring and viewing some errors status as well. That's just creating a Telnet connection to the switch, which is essentially like RS-232 connection. Uh, the web interface, though, is what I usually use or recommend to use to uh, view and monitor status of the, uh, what do you call it, a managed switch through the HMI or web HMI. Uh, let's see, I think I just had a few screenshots of it. This, this is a picture of the management uh, or configuration uh, window within the web page, but you can see all the features that these have. 
and you can use them to definitely enhance security and improve data flow for uh, devices that require it and uh, prioritize those over less significant uh, devices within the network. Let me go over some of the SCADA features now. Let's see, this here is uh, some of the animations that are used within the uh, Aviva Edge software package to create your own HMI and SCADA screens. Uh, the purpose of SCADA is to oftentimes control data log or just simply create a nice H HMI to uh, you know, see the status of the push buttons and the uh, sensors itself within a nice animation of the application. So these are just some of the examples of different industries and different uh, uh, HMI screens that you can create yourself. Uh, and Aviva Edge has a vast library of images, objects, and animations that you can use from within the library, or you can import and create your own as well. Um, one of the main features of uh, the Aviva Edge software is the ability to do alarm and reporting. Uh, for alarms, like I mentioned earlier, oftentimes they are related to network traffic for you know most modern SCADA applications. Uh, so you can use the management console to help detect where the line breakage is. This is especially significant for large buildings or large factories where uh, you know line breakages and network issues can happen all over the place. Say, for instance, a switch goes down because it gets wet then you can use the management console to hopefully help detect where that switch is, what area it is, and help to alleviate the problem, as opposed to having to trace the Ethernet or cabling from one switch to another uh, throughout the network and try to figure out or piece together where the problem occurred. Um, let's see, Modbus TCP, uh, EtherCAT, uh, Ethernet IP, those are all used Ethernet connections and fiber switches as well within large networks. The fiber switches uh, can uh, sh help share data between uh, long distances or, uh, well, I guess mainly long distances or remote locations that are separated where uh, high speed is beneficial to alleviate traffic between distance or between switches. Uh, standard Ethernet cabling is 100 meters, but using fiber, you can extend that uh, distance to, you know, many, many, many kilometers, and even greater than that using additional switches, repeaters, or even thicker fibers. Um, let's see, with Ethernet IP, uh, since it's very high traffic, you can also use managed switches to uh, enhance uh, the the SCADA throughput, where with um, Modbus TCP, it's not as fast, but uh, if you have like IP cameras in the system or something that uses heavy bandwidth, then uh, it can help alleviate uh, lost connections or tr help troubleshoot as well. Um, let's see, we'll go over any questions you have. Uh, let me just show you a few more windows and show you the features, specifically the reporting window. Uh, this. You can, you can use uh, Aviva Edge to create reports uh, for your uh, production environment or monitoring applications. The trend curve is a wonderful thing because you can view uh, statuses of production, levels of tanks, uh, temperature in, say, a building, make sure everything is within range. If something goes out of range, you can trigger an alarm condition, which is also very useful because for instance, if uh, you're doing food manufacturing, specifically you need to meet the FDA requirements and stay within certain tolerances. If something goes out of uh, temperature range, you need to alleviate that very quickly. So SCADA systems and alarm windows in general can help to uh, uh, notify the proper individuals. The alarm windows allow you to uh, both acknowledge and view alarm statuses. You can do alarm history where you can see past alarms and what alarms had occurred and when. And uh, using the current or online alarms, you can see what statuses uh, of the alarms are triggered. And if uh, 
the person is given uh, proper credentials, they can be the ones to uh, disengage or turn off the alarm. Whereas if, um, say, an operator that doesn't have permission uh, is not allowed to uh, disengage the alarm so that, uh, you know, people can, the proper people can be notified. Um, let's see, we'll go over any questions you have. If you have any questions, uh, please enter them in the chat box. Or if you prefer to uh, ask them live, we can unmute you and you can ask them uh, live. Just please raise your hand in the uh, Zoom window. Okay, let's see. Do we have any questions? Let's see, in the chat box, in the Q&A, I don't see any questions yet. But uh, Maria's uh, presentation on the managed switches uh, was very thorough. And, you know, those are great products, especially for large, large applications and applications where security and, uh, you know, additional network troubleshooting could be beneficial. Uh, those are great products as well. Uh, did you have anything else to add, Maria? I don't see any questions or any people raising their hands. Uh, no, but you uh, you can always uh, send us an email to if we or call us if we can help you with anything in the future. Okay, and we'll be happy to go over any applications you have. Uh, we do have ring switches as well. The ring switches are great for redundant applications and for applications where you want an alternate path uh, for your data to travel if uh, you know a line uh, an Ethernet cable breaks. Okay, well, let's see. It looks like uh, we don't have any questions, but thank you all for attending this uh, month and we'll look forward to seeing you next month for our next topic uh, covered in our next webinar. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you all. Have a nice day.